<laughs> Welcome to Revlog, where we are back in person, though we are socially distanced. That's right. Not at responsibly. Our, responsibly. Not at our super secret location that is That's very, right. very. I think uh, actually enclosed. Brian is hologrammed in. I don't think he's actually present with us, but but it's it's the next best thing, really. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I really do wish you could hear our before and after <laughs> stories. <laughs> Today we learned that after an Amy Grant concert, Amy Grant gave Brian flowers. <laughs> I mean, how often do you hear of that? She was so moved by his listening <laughs> that she gave him flowers after the show, and he still has them. You're going to be great someday, Brian, moved I can tell. by my listening. <laughs> she, uh, was, that's <laughs> she was moved. I wonder if Amy Grant remembers giving you flowers. I, I, I'd love to ask her. I'd yeah. love to anybody, ask her. If anybody out there knows Amy Grant. <laughs> you have any connections? We, we would love to, to hear 1983. Her, her side of the story <laughs> <laughs> and what she saw in Brian that day. <laughs> A way to offload some flowers. <laughs> well, beyond uh, Brian's hijinks, we, um, we have a text today, Philippians 2, uh, 12 through 18. Another just beautiful admonition from the scripture here. You know, as we've moved through chapter two, it's been challenging, mm -hmm. but captivating uh, at the same time. Uh, and I've, I've been moved by, by Paul's words here um, throughout chapter two. But Brian, why don't you help us um, first jump in here? Sure. To 12 through 18. Your, your words about being moved are well founded. I there's a richness of, there, there's a um, tenderness, I guess, that he writes with. I, that's how I would describe it. And it is very moving, actually. <clears throat> um, I, I see Paul's language, you, you, you shine like stars, yeah. mm -hmm. which is beautiful. And his language, I'm being poured out like a drink offering, mm -hmm. but in the end, in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter. And here's what I hear from those things. I hear great confidence in these people. I hear you are going to go on. I won't, you don't need me around to ensure that everything's going to be okay. You will continue this worldwide movement, and you're going, going to do it uh, in, in, a, in a way that, that is brilliant. Yeah. You're going to shine like stars. And I think that is, if anybody could have had a hands-on approach to the church, if anybody could have been uh, exacting and meticulous and micromanaging mm -hmm. in his approach, it, could, it would have been Paul. Uh, he, with his great learning, his great skill, his deep insight, he could have he could have told them exactly how everything was going to go. But he said, I, I am I'm going to be leaving yeah. sooner rather than later, probably. And, and you're going to be more than fine. You're going to thrive. Yeah, there's a couple of important things there, you know, I hear. And it's a very similar thing. It's, it's the picture of Jesus walking to the cross. And you see it in his ministry, too, where Jesus hands over authority to his disciples to carry out his work both during his ministry and heading towards the crucifixion. I How love beautiful that picture is. I love that you made that connection because I've been thinking about, and of course this is Galatians, but Paul says, I was taught, I was mentored, I was instructed, mm -hmm. educated by Christ himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so this is the character of Christ that he ad adopts here. And yeah. he says, I'm handing this off to you. How many leaders... Secular and religious have have we seen who say this, there's no way this place is going to make it without me. Yeah, you know it's interesting, and this is one of the things that we loved about Don. How That's right. gracious he was in handing over that mantle to yes. me. When so often what we have seen uh, are are pastors that will grasp at every oh last man. moment of authority that they can, yeah. and and cling to a position they should have. Let, let go of a long time ago and Don was so gracious he, to not be that and be humble and that's exactly right and, like and that here. sadly it seems maybe that that we don't see that kind of thing often enough mm -hmm. but it is a hopeful way to live absolutely it I is. mean it, it inspires hope yeah. Yeah. rather than 
uh, inspiring fear that, oh, our leader is leaving, you know, like this church in Philippi. I think that they were inspired by great hope yeah. that, oh, Paul believes in us, yeah. you know, and, and we can do this. Do you think Don believes in us? <laughs> Don, we'll we love to, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have to wait for the book. Uh, <laughs> The tell, if you'll write us a letter tell-all. like like yeah. Paul did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Aaron, what were your initial uh, thoughts here on, on this passage? Well, I mean, I guess personally, the, the, the first thing that catches me is don't grumble or complain. I mean, just two weeks ago, we are saying don't do anything out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. I'm like, whoa, 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 Paul. <laughs> I can't do anything out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, and I can't grumble or complain. It's like pick one. It's like he's come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's, it's like wow. And I mean, I, I I love that. I mean, he's a parent. He's a teacher. He's mm-hmm. a. I mean, it's it's yep. it's these are just practical instructions yep, right. that you can do something. And in, and if you're going to complain about it the whole time, it really kind of negates the whole message that you're <laughs> trying to. But, but, but truly, what, what, what really got me is ex- exactly where Brian was, that he concludes this by saying, I am being poured out like a drink offering. Mm. And in the next sentence, he says, and I'm filled with joy. Mm. Who talks like that? But you think about it more when you are, you know, good tired, you know, that, that kind of tired yeah, that you are right, just, yeah. you've worked to the bone, but you felt like you've been working at something that matters. Right. And, you know, we, whether it's, you know, you're working with your hands or whatever, whatever you do, where you've just been at it all day on the mission field or wherever, and you are just done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In my family, we say D-U-N, done. <laughs> Is that how you spell it in Missouri? That's, that's how we spell Missouri. Missouri. Right. Yeah. So when you get to that point where you're D-U-N, done, and, and you can still say, man, it's been a good day. Yeah. you got nothing left to give, and you're not even sure that you got any more for tomorrow. But right now you can say, today was a good day. And that's what, that's what Paul's doing here. At the end, I, I'm not sure that I've got an ounce left to give, but, man, I'm just filled with joy because mm-hmm. I got to give it. Yeah. That's a good word. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. And I can't tell you how many people have told me, especially after last week's sermon, uh, were you in my house this week? You know, kind of <laughs> the, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> These truths are universal. <laughs> <That's> right, <amen. laughs> so, uh, Brian, as you read this, what question came to mind? Well, what would happen if I let go? What would happen? And, and this is a question that cuts across all domains of my life for me. What would happen if I let go uh, my, my tight grasp in my family or in my work, mm-hmm. uh, in, my, um, in my avocations and, you know, the things that I think about and, and worry about, what would happen if I let go of that and said, I believe in you? Mm-hmm. That, that has... That has cut deeply in me, that question, these past few days. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Aaron, for you, what question came to mind? I, sometimes I feel like we, we think that if we let people know how bad we've got it or how hard we're, we're working, that that becomes our, our, our badge of honor. And um, <laughs> what, what is true is, is that we're grumbling and complaining. And, right. and then that becomes, and Scripture tells us other, where, other places that we've got our reward. You know, we've received our reward by, by just, just, boy, you just, just don't know how, hard, how tough this is. If, if you only knew how hard I'm working for you. Mm. And then it, it just becomes this martyr complex that, and it's not really kingdom building. It, right. It's just more about, you know, bringing some sort of light onto my efforts. And that's exactly yeah. what it's doing, yeah. bringing light onto my efforts right. and not the Lord. Yeah. So and that is a that's a related thing being being consumed with how hard you're working and all also or by by default it means that you might be standing in the way of somebody else blossoming yeah. in that kind of work and yeah. I think we can impede people's confidence in that way certainly in the church we can Absolutely and so it's it, it the question is you know when I'm feeling like I've just given all I've got, what is my response going to be? Hmm. I, I have a choice. Am I going to just complain about it? Right. Or am I going to say, man, I got to work for the kingdom today That's right. and be filled with joy? Yeah. 
Well, and I, I think we, we've sensed this all the way through chapter 2. That's exactly where Scripture is pointing us here. And, and a reminder, kind of like where you were going, Brian, that um, in essence, our lives become just immensely more valuable to the kingdom as we help and cause others to flourish. Yes. Right? So yes. if we can help everybody else blossom, we've done a good work. A group of flourishing people, a, a fellowship of flourishing people yeah. is unmatched. Yeah, that's right. Amen. We'd love to hear your thoughts uh, on this passage and, and answers to these questions if you would comment below. Linda!